If the president and Bannon do go to war with fellow Republicans, they will likely be counting on support from evangelical leaders, long some of the president's closest allies. In fact, when we asked the White House for an official who could appear on this program today to speak on behalf of the president, they pointed us to our next guest, evangelical leader and Liberty University president Jerry Falwell Jr. Falwell was an early Trump supporter, endorsing him before the 2016 Iowa caucuses. They were together again in May of this year, when President Trump returned to Liberty University to deliver the commencement address. We must always remember that we share one home and one glorious destiny. Whether we are brown, black, or white, we all bleed the same red blood of patriots. And Jerry Falwell Jr. joins me now. Thanks for joining us this morning, Mr. Falwell. On Twitter this week, you praised what you called the president's bold, truthful statement about Charlottesville, saying you were so proud of Donald Trump. But the president said Tuesday there were, quote, very fine people on both sides. Who were those very fine people marching with the neo-Nazis? Uh, the bold and truthful statements I was referring to were his willingness to call evil and terrorism by its name, to identify the groups, the Nazis, the KKK, the white supremacists. And that's something a leader should do. And I admire him for that. You know, he, President Trump, is something that we haven't had in national leadership in a long time. He's substance over form. So many of our politicians, recent leaders, national leaders, have been form over substance. They tell people what they want to hear. They sugarcoat everything, or they have sugarcoated everything. And I think the American people have, have gotten sort of uh, thin-skinned, and I think they need to listen to the substance of what he said. The only groups he identified by name as the evil, and causing what happened in Charlottesville were the Nazis, the KKK, and the white supremacists. Well, That's what I thought was bold and well, 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 let me tell you what he said, though. Let's go back to this. He said there were very fine people on both sides. Do you believe there were very fine I have people no on idea. both he, sides? He has inside information that I don't have. I don't know if there were historical purists there who were trying to preserve some statues. I don't know. But well, but he, ha he had information I didn't have, and I believe that he what, spoke what do you mean? What you was, think he knew that uh, some people were I think he saw videos there? of who was there. I think he was talking about what he had seen, information that he had that I don't have. All I know is it was pure evil. The media has tried to paint this as Republican versus Democrat, black versus white, Jew versus Gentile, but it's just pure evil versus good. And that's what we all you need to unite behind. We all need to unite behind stopping evil, whether it's Timothy McVeigh, who's the terrorist in Oklahoma City, or it's the it's it's Muslim terrorist in Barcelona, or it's it's somebody flying a plane into the and in the into the World Trade but, Center. But it's when, all evil. But but when you say things like that, when you say it's all evil, but you say you're so proud of Donald Trump, that's the message that resonated. It didn't resonate that you think he might have some information. Let me let me also tell you yeah. what the chair of the RNC, Ronna Romney McDaniel, said on Good Morning America this week. That the second people who joined that demonstration saw Nazi flags. They should have turned tail the second you join a group that has a Nazi flag or is joining the KKK. There is no good there. There's no good KKK member. There's no nice neo-Nazi. So I'm still intrigued I, by your idea that Donald Trump somehow knows there were oh, I some good people I, I, there. I don't know that to be the fact. I just know that the, it's totally true what you just said. There's no good KKK. There's no good white supremacist. I've lived in, in Lynchburg, Virginia for 55 years. I went to law school at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, lived there for three years. I never have met a white supremacist member of a hate group in my, all my years in that part of the country. That's not what our central Virginia community is about. And, and Terry McAuliffe, our governor, was right when he said, these people need to go home. They're not of Virginia. They're not about Virginia. And they're all evil. So would you say, given what you know, there were no very fine people on that side, that other? the side of the neo-Nazis. I, I don't have that information. All I know is, is those people are pure evil, and there's no moral equivalence. Lee, the Secretary of the Treasury said this morning that Donald Trump does not believe there's any moral equivalency but, between but, but, the but, but between back the to the evil. RNC statement, yeah. the, that, that you should turn tail if there are neo-Nazis there, and you're still saying you're not sure there weren't very fine people on that side. 
I, I think they should, if somebody showed up and they saw that they were marching beside somebody who hates blacks, who hates Jews, who, who wants to do violence, I think they should just walk away. Yes. The, the president also said there is blame on both sides. Susan Bro, the mother of the woman killed in the car attack, Heather Heyer, said she wouldn't talk to the president, as we heard there, mm -hmm. uh, because he equated counter protesters with the KKK. Let's listen. Well, he, okay. I saw an actual clip of him at a press conference equating the protesters, like Ms. Heyer, uh, with the KKK and the white supremacists. You can't wash this one away by shaking my hand and saying I'm sorry. What would you say to that mother? I think the president has made it very clear that there's no moral equivalency between what the counter protesters did, even though maybe some of them resorted to violence in, in response. There's no more equivalency between that and somebody driving his car into a crowd because he hates people of other races. That's wrong. That's just evil. There's no two ways about it. And the president has made that clear. His secretary of the treasury said it this morning. Do you think he could have been clearer? I think he... You've heard Republicans he, on the Hill. You've heard... One of the reasons I've supported him is because he doesn't say what's politically correct. He says what's in his heart, what he believes. And sometimes that gets him in trouble. But he does not have a racist bone in his body. I know him well. He is working so hard to help the minorities and people in the inner cities up through... He says that, civil, that school choice is the civil rights issue of our time. Betsy DeVos has been traveling around the country trying to promote school choice to help inner city youth get to choose which schools they attend and not be stuck in a public school that's failing in a big city. And he's doing so many other things to bring jobs back to Let, the inner let's city. Stay, let's stay with that's, this for a moment. That's what matters. Could. An NPR report this morning says that a growing number of Liberty University graduates are preparing to return their diplomas in protest of your continuing support for President Trump. Chris Gaumer, a 2006 graduate and former Student Government Association president, told NPR that it was a simple decision. In defending the president's comments, Jerry Falwell Jr. is making himself, and it seems to me, the university he represents complicit. It completely misunderstands my support. My support for the president is his bold and truthful willingness to call terrorist groups by their names. And that's something we haven't seen in presidents in, in recent years. Well, well, let's stay on that point. When you endorsed Mr. Trump last year mm -hmm. in an op-ed, you criticized President Obama over his handling of ISIS, saying his policies had the intended or unintended effect of breathing life into the lungs of the terrorist group, adding that President Obama and Hillary Clinton most definitely signaled to Islamic State leaders that they had no intention of seriously challenge, challenging them or even of calling radical Islamic terrorism by its name. If that is what you believe, then is President Trump making the same mistake by not unequivocally calling the attack in Charlottesville domestic he's terrorism? He's doing just... Domestic the, terrorism. Yes, he did. He's doing exactly the opposite of what I was criticizing Obama and Clinton for not doing. He's calling them by their name. He's calling the Nazis a white supremacist evil. He's, he's not calling it domestic he's, terrorism. The president said Tuesday, you can call it terrorism, you can call it murder, you can call it whatever you want. Why hasn't he called the attack in Charlottesville domestic terrorism? He did. He said that's something for the, for the uh, officials to determine. Call it what you want. He said it was pure evil. He said the driver of that car is nothing but a murderer. How, how more... How, he's how he's clear, the president. How clear, officials. How clear, he's the president. How clear can he be? I don't understand. He could be clearer by saying, calling it domestic terrorism. So you don't think he needs to do that because other officials have said it? Words matter. He's the one who was criticizing, and you too, mm -hmm. President Obama, for not calling it Islamic terrorism. I think terrorism. he did. He said it was, he said, you can call it terrorism, you can call it evil, you can call it murder. I'm not sure exactly what his words were, but he never, Those said, were he, he never said it was not terrorism. Okay. He left the door open for that, yes. Okay. Do you think he could be a little more careful in his words or not? All of us could. All of us could. But at least he's not politically correct. He's not so concerned about rehearsing and focus grouping every statement he makes. And that's one and of the reasons I And that unites the nation. Him. Do you feel he's uniting the nation? I, I feel like that people... You know, after that, after I heard his statement the other day, I didn't hear anything there that would offend somebody. But then I started speaking with some of my friends in the Jewish community in Charlottesville. And some of my friends, I have a very good friend who's the president of the largest historically black college in the United States, Hampton University. And we started having conversations. They started explaining to me how 
insecure and how scared they felt that day when terrorists, these groups, these terrorist groups were walking up and down the sidewalk right outside their synagogue. And I understood after talking to them how, how good people could hear the same statement and take away different, different things from it. And I, after hearing that, I, I, um, I understand how some people could misunderstand his words. And so, yes, I think he could, he could, he could be more, he could be more polished and more um, politically correct. But that's the reason I supported him is because he's not. He says what he thinks, and he is bold about it. I admire that in a leader. Thanks for joining us this Thank morning, you. Mr. Fowler. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.